At the beginning of this lecture series, we discussed the wave-like nature of quantum mechanics. And just as a quick reminder, in case you haven't seen that, what this means is that in quantum mechanics, we can describe some system that we can call by the Greek letter Psi, and we can say that this system is going to be in a superposition of different states. What this means is that this system, if we measure it, if we do some experiment and we want to see in which state it is, this state can be in, for example, some state that we call Psi1, it can be in some state that we call Psi2 or Psi3, and each one of these states will have some probability that we will denote by the constants A, B, and C. And this is what the theory can tell us. The, the theory of quantum mechanics can tell us what the wave function is, which basically means what this system is, what, the, what is this Psi, and that is the best we can do. So if we want to predict an experiment, we can't really predict the outcome of the experiment, we can only predict the probabilities of each one of these outcomes. And that is very different from classical mechanics or what we see in our day-to-day -day lives, because in that scenario, what we see daily is that if we have all the information available, we can perfectly predict what is going to happen in some experiment. And this is fundamentally different in quantum mechanics. Even if we know everything that there is to know, we simply cannot know the outcome. We can only know the probabilities. This is, by the way, why it is called the orthodox position. And there is the realist interpretation that says that this is not correct. That means that our theory is somehow wrong, or there is something missing, or our experiments are just not clever enough. But if we were to be able to either make better experiments or just improve our theory, then just as we can in classical mechanics, we could always predict the outcome of an experiment. So those are two quite important interpretations here of this wave-like nature, and as you can see, they are quite opposite. And before we kind of had to leave it like that, we couldn't go much further. Now, with the help of what we have seen in spin, we actually can. So let's say I'm going to use now a thought experiment that I read in Griffith's book, which is very, very good. And it says as follows. So let's say that we have some system and we know that the system is in the up state in the z direction. So basically, if we measure the spin in the z direction, we will get an up state, which means it has a value of h bar over 2. That's what we start with. And now let's say that someone comes along and says, well, and what is the value of the spin in the x direction? Now, someone in the orthodox position, what would, well, what we, would he say? The thing is, according to the orthodox position, there is no defined value for the sx. So spin in the x direction, it doesn't have a value. It's not that we don't know what it is. That might be what someone in the realist position is going to say. Well, are you saying that you just don't know it? And it is not that. It is not that we don't know it. It doesn't have a defined value for the spin in the x direction if we measure it in the z direction. It's going to be in a superposition between the up and the down states, but it doesn't have a defined one. So, well, now this realist might just take some equipment and measure the spin in the x direction, and he's going to get some value, let's say h bar over 2, which is the up state. And now he's going to be like, hey, well, guess what? It does have a defined state. I just measured it. It's an up state. What happens now? And the answer is that, well, it didn't have a defined state before he measured it, but the act of measuring it forced this wave function to collapse, and now he got a result. But by doing that, he altered the system. It is not the same system that we had at the beginning, because now, since he collapsed this wave function to this value, now the spin in the z direction is no longer defined. And how do we know that? Remember back to the generalized uncertainty principle, which told us that if two operators do not commute, then there is an uncertainty principle, which means we cannot know both of those quantities simultaneously. And as we have seen, the spin angular momentum operators do not commute, which means we cannot know them at the same time. So we are in this position, he just measured h bar over 2, and we are claiming in the orthodox position that the state in the sz, so the spin in the z direction, is no longer h bar over 2, it's no longer the up state. 
So this realist may go ahead and just measure the spin in the up state. And he may get lucky and get the value of h bar over 2. And he's going to be like, hey, guess what? It is like this, so there is something wrong in the theory. But if we do this many, many times, what is going to happen is that half the times the experiment will give the result h bar over 2, and the other half of the times it's going to give the result minus h bar over 2, which is the down state. So this basically kills the realist position, because this now shows that even if we knew this, the state in the z direction before, when we perturbed the experiment, when we changed the system, and we then found some other quantity, now when we go back, the system is no longer where we left it. So there is this random nature of just quantum mechanics. So the realist position is simply not something that is valid anymore. However, this is by no means resolved at all because we still have to deal with this randomness. It's still a question, why does this happen? How, there are many other interpretations that are very, very interesting that we might dedicate some time to in the future. There's obviously the very well-known many worlds interpretation that I think I discussed a bit in the previous video. So, and there are actually many, many more and every year more interpretations arise and very few, if at all any, are being closed because this is even almost more philosophical than physical at this point. But this is something that I wanted to comment because spin really allows us to go back to something we saw at the beginning of this course. And I think it's really, really lightning and something that I hope all of you that have been studying quantum mechanics have been wondering at some time. So I will see you in the next video where we can finally go back and finish spin and only this whole course. So I will see you then.